Welcome to my channel. I'm Scott and if you want to catch my newest video, I post one every day. In this video, I am going to walk you through the process of valuing PBF Energy stock by analyzing their financial statements and dissecting their financial ratios so we can determine if it's a buy or a sell. PBF Energy is a petroleum refiner and supplier of transportation fuels, heating oils, lubricants, and petrochemical feedstocks. The company is headquartered in Parsippany, New Jersey. Its refineries are located in Louisiana, Ohio, New Jersey, and Delaware. The company produces a range of products, including gasoline, ultra-low sulfur diesel, jet fuel, and asphalt. The company was formed in 2008 as a joint venture by Petro Plus Holdings and the private equity companies Blackstone Group and First Reserve, each committing $666 million in equity. Let's get started with the model. This is a small cap company, 1.1 billion market cap. They're trading at 9.43 a share and they have 120 million shares outstanding. Let's look at the financials. The way you value a company is you estimate the free cash flows into the future and then you discount those numbers back to today's value. That's what we're doing in this video. And free cash flow is cash flow from operations minus capital expenditures. So the company did have nice free cash flow each year, except in a trailing 12 months. Net income is a profit and loss on the income statement. It's revenue minus expenses. And they did have positive every year, a big negative in a trailing 12 months. Revenue is a sales for the company. That peaked in 2018 at 27 billion, but that's been going down ever since. This is the company's income statement. The top line is the revenue, the sales. Below that is the cost of revenue. An example is the payroll of their labor. The difference between those two numbers is their gross profit. The company had negative gross profit in a trailing 12 months. Then below that is operating expenses. Depreciation and insurance are operating expenses. Then below that is operating income. The company did have positive operating income every year except in a trailing 12 months. Below that is the interest they pay in their debt and below that is other income and expenses. This is usually impairments or other non-cash gains or losses. Below that is their pre-tax income, then their taxes. So the bottom line of the income statement is their net income and that was negative in a trailing 12 months, positive in prior years. This is the company's statement of cash flows. The top line is operating cash flow. That's how much cash the company generates from its operational business. Then you have capital expenditures, which are investments in property, plant, and equipment. Operating cash flow minus CapEx gives you your free cash flow. The company does have positive free cash flow every year. It's really small in a trailing 12 months. They did issue 320 million of capital stock in 2018 and 133 million in 2019. When a company issues stock, it dilutes the current shareholders. The company didn't add any new debt in 2017, 18, and 19 since they were generating positive free cash flow, but it did take on three and a half billion dollars of debt. It paid down 1.3 billion, so it added about two billion dollars of debt in the trailing 12 months. This is because their revenue was down and they weren't generating much profit. So they needed money from somewhere to help run their business. The most important part of any business is their operating cash flow. If you cannot generate positive operating cash flow, you don't have much of a business. And this company generates pretty healthy operating cash flow from 300 million to 900 million. You could think of operating cash flow as net income converted to cash because net income is your accounting profit and loss. It's not actual cash. There's a lot of non-cash items on the income statement. The way you calculate operating cash flow, you start with net income, that was negative 500 million. Then you have to add back 480 million of depreciation. Depreciation is a non-cash expense that brings down your net income, but you have to add it back on the CFO section. There were also 680 million of non-cash expenses that brought down your net income, so we have to add that back, and 251 million in changes in working capital. Even though the company reported a half billion dollar loss onto the income statement, it actually generated 330 million dollars of operating cash flow. 
Let's look at a capital structure, $3.6 billion of equity, $2.4 billion of debt. They're 60% equity, 40% debt. Their net debt is 1.6 billion and their WAC is 12.4%. And that's a discount rate we're gonna to apply to the future cash flows. We estimated four years of future free cash flows. We also estimated terminal value, which is all cash flows past year four, that's 4.6 billion. We discounted those numbers back to today's new weighted average cost of capital. We get a value of the company of $4.1 billion. We divide that by 120 million shares. And we get a calculated stock price of $34. They're trading at $9.43, so they're trading at a 73% discount. It's a strong buy according to the model. Simply Wall Street is even higher than me. They're at $55 a share, so they're saying it's 83% undervalued. This is the stock price the last five years, and it looked like it peaked about $50 a couple years ago. The company is not struggling nearly as much as its stock price indicates. Due to COVID-19 and slower revenue, the company cut its dividend in 2020. In the past quarter, the stock has doubled up 103%. Although the stock price has decreased 71% in the past three years. The market is forward looking, so they are really bidding this stock price lower. This article mentions, generally speaking, companies without profits are expected to grow revenue annually and at a good clip. In the trailing 12 months, they were not profitable, but their revenue declined. It didn't go up. This sentence conveys the message really nicely. Some companies are willing to postpone profitability to grow revenue faster. So companies like Amazon and Tesla, they were growing their revenue so fast, but they weren't making any profits. That's why a lot of investors were saying these companies aren't good, but they turned out to be great companies. There are many investors that are okay with no profits as long as the company grows its revenue. This company is not growing its revenue. So that's why they're really pushing the price lower, thinking the company's in major trouble. This company has a really high beta, 2.98, so the stock moves three times the market. It's very volatile. The stock has gone down 63% in the past 52 weeks, much worse than the S&P 500, which went up 17% in the same time frame. The 52-week low was $4, the high was $30. The stock is currently on an uptrend. It's trading well above its 50 day and 200 day moving average. About five to six million shares are traded each day for this stock. Of the 120 million shares outstanding, 95 million are on float, 20% are held by institutions, and 17% of the shares are shorted. So there's a lot of people out there shorting this stock thinking it's gonna go down. If you invested $10,000 into this company when it IPO'd in 2012, you would have more than doubled your money after a few years. But if you held on, you would have lost half your money. Invisora owns 20% of the stock, then BlackRock, State Street, Vanguard, and Dimensional Fund. Let's look at their financial ratios. The average PE in the market's 10, the median is 14. PE is stock price over earnings per share. To calculate earnings per share, that's net income over shares outstanding. They have negative net income, so they have negative PE. Price to sales is stock price over sales per share. They're at 0.1. They have a really low price to sales ratio. Price to book is stock price over book value per share. They're at 0.3. Also a really low price to book ratio. And the way you calculate book value per share, it's equity over shares outstanding. Equity is assets minus liabilities in the balance sheet and they have 3.6 billion of equity, 3 billion of tangible equity. Interest coverage ratio is EBIT over interest expense. They have negative EBIT, so they have a negative interest coverage ratio. ROE is net income over equity, negative net income, negative ROE. Current ratio is current assets over current liabilities. They have a good current ratio and their current assets are 814 million of cash. 830 million of receivables and 2.1 billion of inventory. So the company does seem to be well capitalized. They did have a small positive free cash flow and they have 1.3 billion of working capital. The best way to look at ratios to compare them to similar companies. I've done videos on Nesty, Parkland, Philips 66, Renewable Energy, Valero and Valvoline, all in the same industry as PBF. And if PBF has a number in red, they're worse than the average. If they have a number in green, they're better than the average. 
So they're worse than PE because they're negative. They have an amazing price to sales and price to book ratio. I sometimes get concerned when a company has a really good price to sales ratio and a negative PE. That's a value trap. They have a good current ratio. They have a terrible ROE. They're doing a little better in debt. And they have the smallest company on this list at 1 billion market cap. So to summarize, I have them trading at a 73% discount. It may seem risky investing in a stock that has declining revenue, but if you were correct and the price did go back up, you could make a really good return. I much rather invest in a company with $20 billion of revenue than invest in a company with $10 million of revenue that people are bidding up to the sky because they think the future is going to be amazing. This company proved it can generate revenue, not only in the past, but it's currently proving it right now. I rank their free cash flows 5 out of 10 because they had a really small number in the trailing 12 months. I rank their revenue 4 out of 10 because it's been slipping the past couple of years. And I rank their ratios 5 out of 10. They have an amazing price sales and price to book, but they have a negative PE and a negative ROE. So let me know what you think. Give this video a like, subscribe, or comment below. Also, if you'd like to get a custom valuation or just support the channel, you can become a member by clicking on the link in the description below. Thanks for watching.